Knuckles, J Dog back with another goddamn interview. And today we got another goddamn metal legend, fucking Attila from Tormentor and Mayhem, most notably known for. So Attila, you're out here for fucking Tormentor, yeah, Evil bro. Warfest. Yeah. Um, how does it feel to be? I mean, because you're mostly known for and what you're doing is a lot of mayhem shit. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to bring up your old school roots, you know, from the 80s demos? And I'm assuming you're playing everything from just the demos, pretty much. Yeah, this is uh, this is fucking awesome, bro, to be here and to see this underground uh, movement, like the underground metal, like so alive, you know. And uh, yeah, Tormentor, we started in 85. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the reason I was invited to Mayhem, actually, because uh, Tormentor was a favorite band, one of the favorite of both Euronymous and that, you know, that. So when that passed away, um, the Euronymous approached me to, you know, replace him on the vocal. <laughs> You're jumping right into it. I was going to ask that later. <laughs> yeah. And I, I actually even like, you know, it's a bit different with Tormentor because with Tormentor, we mostly played in Hungary. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we had a show in Austria and, 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 um, and Slovakia too. But like Mayhem, you know, they had like, what, three, four shows in the 80s. We had like a fucking hundred and we had like not we we had like big crowd already. Like it went up gradually. Like basically that was when punk and everything went a little bit down and, and extreme metal came up. And um, you know, um, even we were in the periphery of metal. So a metal uh, scene, like metal journalists, they were like mainstream, didn't really like us. Yeah, sure. And and it was like basically we had like bad reviews and all the shit, but in the same like of the shows and everything. But that just put more oil on the fire. So more and more people came. And actually the first shows were like pure chaos, bro. Like people burn vinyls, people who wanted to fight, they came. The first shows, I didn't see the audience because it was like all this five meter, like this kind of restricted area before in front of the show. If you wanted to come there, you had to fucking fight and go into the fucking real Pogo. There was no security. This is in Hungary? This is oh. in Hungary. And we had like at <clears throat> least 50 to, I mean, I guess, yeah, between 50 to 100 shows before uh, early 90, when we, or around 90, when we eventually split because um, it's, but we had like crowd like fucking first like a couple of hundred people, then it went up, I remember, to like the seven, 800, then went to more like thousand. Yeah. So it's like really big fucking shows and uh, especially in the beginning, it was so chaotic and yeah, man, it's uh, it's just amazing memories, you know, and I really want to do like one day an interview um, or, or like a documentary with the guys when we all sit at the table with a beer or something, you know, and we bring up these old stories because it's one thing when I'm saying it, but it's another thing when we all because everybody remembers something else, you yes. know, and yeah. That was fucking hell. Everybody hated us, like in the scene, I'm saying. Or we had like this kind of... But then, you know, Battery came out, the Return album. Like, it's like in 86, maybe. And that was my favorite record. I was fucking blown away. Oh, you liked it more than the debut? It, it, well, yeah. 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 Or, no, I loved both. But yeah. that was like such a fucking like, yeah. Yeah. So I saw the German Metal Hammer review of Battery and they got two out of seven. Oh, no, really? They didn't like yeah. that came out Yeah, yeah. So then I thought, like, fuck, it's okay to be hated. Okay. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. There's no problem. Yeah. So why did uh, Tormentor, like, in the 80s, before, like, there was, it kind of came back, reunited, why did you guys never do, uh, get, get to doing an album, at least one studio album? That what happened, like, we did first a demo called The Seven Day of Doom. That's, yep. like, 87. And that was, like, we just wanted to record our songs because we had, like I say, a lot of fans. Everybody demanded to fucking hear our shit. So... We picked up the cheapest studio you could find. It was like in a basement, like in this kind of like, you know, against the, the how you call it, like a bomb shelter, you know, where okay. people go down and like these metal doors and like homemade, homemade fucking mixer, homemade delay. And there was a four track. So we had to just plug and play. You know, that's the seven. Yeah, those demos sound good, though. Everybody loves it. Like. Like, it's fucking funny because now we did a re-release and I think when a season of Mr. Someone, I asked them to have promotion and they put it on Spotify or something and it, it said like 2023, some mistake. So people wrote me, dude, how you do that sound? How you do that production? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. 
like I was because they thought it was a, a later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I I was just laughing. I didn't want to say you want to buy the shittiest. You go to the shittiest place you can imagine and get some homemade <laughs> delays and homemade fucking uh, mixer desk, and then you're gonna sound like that. And you had to play. We played all together, you know. Yeah. And then I tell you what happened. Then we got like. Like I say, we got like big, we played like fucking big, like even like sometimes indoor, like in Pecha, in Budapest was like 2,500 capacity. I'm not saying it was completely sold out in that mm. time, but it was like easily 1,500, 2,000 people. Even at the end, our last show was like outdoor. That was like fucking thousands of people, you know, with a band called Necronomicon. Okay, yeah. And uh, from Germany. Germany yeah, yeah, Germany. yeah, yeah. And Here's the thing, someone came, it was like, but we are still talking about communism, the whole fucking system, you know, actually we were not even allowed, we were all underage, and, or most of us, I was still underage, like I'm from 71, you know, so, um, you were not allowed to play, basically, so it was like kind of illegal, so we never really had money, or we just um, got some shit, we didn't know anything, we were just fucking playing like, uh, like animals, you know, and, some guys came from a state, some label, we didn't understand, and they said, yeah, you, can, you guys can have a record. We were like, what? Okay. So that's when we recorded on No Domini. So that was a better studio. That was like actually a pretty good one compared to those times, yeah, you know, like good. a fucking good. good studio, but yeah. the producers didn't fucking know. Like that was before us. I remember the artist who was before us in the, in the schedule, was this actor girl who was like making like a record for children, mm. like children music. Imagine, yeah. and then we came yeah, in and plug and now we come. So the producers didn't understand we'll, shit. Music, yeah. So we were like trying to figure out and we found the synthesizers there, you mm. know, in the studio, like, wow, you know, like so we started to use that just like that. Fuck, let's use synths, you yeah. know, here or there so that you can hear a few songs that synthesizers, you know, yeah. we already use. And here is the thing, when it was done, it was already a house shell how it got paid, but somehow someone paid the studio. I don't know who the fuck. But then the system went down. It's in 89, you know. And uh, I don't know what happened. The whole shit, the guy disappeared, the master disappeared, everything disappeared. We just had a recording on a tape. And actually, also, our guitarist's father had like a hi fi video. That was like a big deal. So, Fucking luckily, we that we made a tape on a VHS, like mm -hmm. a hi-fi VHS, because the master's gone. And those guys fucking disappeared. It's never been released. And we were like, what the fuck is going on? So after a while, like all our fans were demanding the shit. So we started to record that first that cassette, you know, we had from the studio, mm -hmm. like we recorded there. Yeah. And we started to tape, like, you know. Dub. Dub, dub the tapes yeah, yeah. like cassettes, you yeah, know, yeah. and started to give Do that away. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and this is how the shit got to Norway, actually. Yeah. Like the guys were tra tape trading, so you that's know. That's how Mayhem heard it. Yeah, yeah, and this is how Mayhem heard it and everything. So the stuff never got released. And then also, you know, that time military was mandatory oh, in, okay, was in Hungary, you know, so the guys had to go to the service and everything just fallen apart, unfortunately. I still regret, we should never stop, yeah. <laughs> you know. But that time I was 18, fuck, we didn't know. We were like, fuck yeah. that shit. Plus, also, I have to admit, it's before I, I never heard about the second wave, uh, which came, you know, in, in like mayhem and stuff, you yeah. know. Um, so we thought the whole shit went down. Yeah, like nobody cared anymore. No, because also look, listen, look at the bands. Battery was brave, but they started this Viking metal. Yeah, which is fucking cool, actually. But it's not black metal. Black on the more, yeah, yeah. Look at what we were listening. Like the German trash bands, they were like more black metal, Sodom like Destruction, changed, yeah. Sodom. Yeah. Everybody changed. Yeah. Everybody changed. We were like, what the fuck? And it's like white metal and glam metal or stripe all yeah. this shit came up so we were like fuck this shit you know but uh, we didn't know anything yeah. so we should not stop and then i heard from mayhem just when we pretty much stopped with tormentor you know someone told me hey have you heard about mayhem like i'm like you know and you know what's the funny fucking thing like we all had like stage names and like the drummer was like demon too guitar is like bestial animal <laughs> we, we have picked up this this yeah. funny names you know like wolf carry on my name was mayhem okay yeah 
I didn't know. So I, I was like, Attila. yeah, and I was not Attila. I was, yeah. my name was me. I mean, I can, you, you can find like all Tormentor t-shirts and lineup says vocals yeah, I, mayhem. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, fuck them shit. Like, you know, I heard from, and I was thinking first it was like a joke. Like, yeah, they, who the fuck off. is joking with my name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because of course we were yeah. like proud, like yeah. young yeah, idiots. Yeah, yeah, like the ego shit. Yeah. So that was, I remember that was my first thought. And then my friend thought, no, 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 this is like, you should look, check it out. And, and what shit, did you like hear, the, the demo or Death Crush? Or? Um, first, uh, it was um, the Euronymous founder, that time kind of manager, but it was not really a manager, a guy who helped us to fucking do public relations, you know? Oh. So he approached me and then he wrote me a fucking nice letter where he explained all the shit, like almost like a gentleman talk, you know, like very noble letter, basically, you know, like typewriter, you yeah. know, sign very like, very, yeah, very professional. I was like, holy shit. Okay. So, and he sent me, I think that crush first mm -hmm. and the first Bursum and some dark throne stuff. And, uh, and did you like it right away or no? um, to be honest, I, I was like, okay, but I was not blown away. Okay. It was like, because that was also demos, like the yeah. mayhem that crush, you know, yeah. it was like a demo, like funky. I thought like, fuck, we were there with me, uh, with Tormentor already, but it was interesting and was cool. And then I heard about the chaos. Mm. That's what got more interesting, Until like the, the fucking burnings, church the burnings, all this shit. And well, yeah, what, would you, what was your, because that was going to be a question. What was your take on that? When you heard about it, were you like, that's going too far? You thought it was cool? Uh, I thought I was young. I thought it was cool. I thought it was interesting for yeah. sure. And uh, and also, you know, when I got the Mysterious, like he sent me later the tape of Mysterious when we got a bit more serious. Actually, it took like years. We were like, you know, it was like a little bit going slow as fuck, you know? Yeah. And then he sent me the tape. And that was the next, that was another level. That was like another band. Of course, it was also different lineup. I was like, but it was mysterious just with, uh, with no vocals? No vocals. So like at that point, you got that tape, Dead killed himself. Yeah, he was already um, dead. And you never, you never met him, did you? No, no, um, no, no. So I just saw his letters and I just later heard like how much he was a big fan of Tormentor, okay. you know? Yeah. Now, so, well, how did that approach send you the tapes? How did he asked you to join and did you go to Norway to do it to record or where? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to go to Norway. But then again, when I heard the tape, I was like, holy fucking shit. What is this? You know, this I never different. heard anything like that before. Yeah. I was, I love Slayer, I still love, but that time I was into yeah. it and I was like, fuck, this is like double beat. Yeah. Like the snare was like double than the trash yeah. bands and shit. Like Hellhammer yeah. was. It's uh, blast beats, yeah. Yeah. Like I never heard. Actually, I didn't hear more with Angel and shit. Oh, you that was, no, because we were like so separated yeah. and stuff. So yeah. I didn't hear, you know, that already the death metal exists like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and for me, that metal was like possessed, you know, yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, fuck. And this was like the, the chords were like different. This kind of chord playing, you know, not just like the trash way. It was like something new, you know, I never heard before. So the whole music was super fast. But in the same time, had this slow motion, and I was like blown away by that. Then I was like, "Fuck yeah!" So, with that being said, like when you introduced and you came in to do your vocals, I've always wondered because your vocal style on that is different than on Tormentor. Mm -hmm. Was that intentional or it was just natural? Because some people, like to this day, they either love how your vocals sound like that, and some people hate it. Yeah, so different. yeah. I loved it because it was it's different than all the other black metal screechy guys. I was like, and it sounds just evil. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know exactly what you mean, and this is how it happened. Like, of course, I could scream like Tormentor way, and then, you know, I just told the guys to show. I was like, I had my band called Plasma Pool that time. I did this type of vocal with that, but that was like kind of industrial, very old school industrial shit, you know, a little bit influenced by Leibach. So I just showed the guys, I could sing like this too. And, you know, Remus, everybody was blown away. Actually, the the whole thing was like the they all everybody was in the studio so we basically had like two three rehearsals before we entered the studio very few so i just got in shape with the music so then i came then when they were like "Fuck, this is how you should sing especially euronymous was pushing me like that way and so i, I remember it. when yeah. yeah and everybody liked it and 
when I got to, I remember I got to, we were like going by the songs, you know, and we got like buried by time and dust, and then we were like, oh shit, you, can you do a little bit more torment or this, this one, <laughs> you yeah. know? And then I did a little bit like that, but it's like, um, I don't know, I also want, you know, to do something else, like why the fuck, I mean, I just, I just follow my instinct, you know, yeah. and, and they supported it. Yeah. So that's why it's like that, the vocals, you know, everything. So it's not just my idea. And even like the mysterious, you know, like when you, you don't even say, can you do it like sound like a bit more like a priest, mm. you know, in that song, when there's a lot in parts and shit mm. like that, you know, so it was, it was basically, and I actually, that's my philosophy in music. I love to follow the, the, like I, I, I love to follow, you know, instructions like the people who create the music, they have a vision, you know, the composer. So I like to hear their, yeah. their impact, you know, on the stuff. And then anyway, it's going to be my voice. Yeah. So. So you're one of the few people that are, you know, still in the scene that you can confirm or, you know, give his take on it. Like Euronymous, how was he as a person? Like there's, you get peer people that talk shit and then like that, you know, like, you don't know if it's true or not. Like. What was your take on? Was he a quiet guy, like a really nice guy, uh, stuck to himself, goofy I, guy? I, I only can say good things about him. Um, How would you have described him as a person or somebody? He wanted? was like, um, uh, first of all, it was like not too tall. Okay. <laughs> I thought like he's going to be a giant yeah. guy, you know? There's a few guys. And I saw him like, like oh, shit, okay. Yeah. But, <laughs> but he was very sharp, very straightforward, very sober. Like, I was like, hey guys, do you have a beer? <laughs> oh, or, so you a drink? Yeah, no, no, okay. no, 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 no. Like we have this movie, I don't know, I I mean, like you see that we are party, like the name is, yeah, yeah, like yeah. people are like fucked up and I don't know, it was nothing like that. <laughs> so the, it was like, <laughs> super, everybody was straight, serious. And of course we had jokes, but that was always like fucking sick jokes, you know, like black dark jokes and He's been like super serious. They were pushing everything to the limit. And uh, it took like full effort of him and the band to, because he wanted the quality, you know, he wanted. So the, the album was recorded in Greek Hallen in, in Bergen in Nor uh, Norway, which is like a big music complex uh, named after Edvard Grieg, one of the biggest uh, classical composer from Norway. So it was like, uh, a good production, you know, um, he had to save all the fucking lost cent he, he had or borrow money from his parents or I don't know who, who else he borrowed. So it was like a very, very big deal. And everybody was super serious and uh, super straight, you know, and uh, um, I don't know. I was like, I thought it was going to be more rock and roll, but no. <laughs> so you're a little no. disappointed at the time. Um, I would not say that. No, I was so fucking happy, you know, that fuck, this is serious. This is like when I, I, I couldn't believe Hellhammer, first of all, can play like that. So yeah. at the first rehearsals, I was like, holy shit, this is real. Yeah, I can like believe real finally I have a fucking real band yeah. after Tormentor, you know, like yeah. maybe, maybe now I will have finally a vinyl. I, I will have something released vinyl, yeah. because that was really big deal back in the days. So, yeah to have yeah, like a record feet. deal, yeah, you yeah. know, especially for me, like being from Hungary, from like an ex-communist country, you know. So, and uh, I just thought like, he was saying like, yeah, because I was at my university. So it was like, okay, when you finished, you move to Norway and you're gonna work in my shop. That was the plan. Like, and you agreed? He, of course, yeah. I was already preparing for that, you know, yeah. but shit happened, yeah. so. So yeah, the obviously it's soon after that he was murdered. Yeah. What? How did you hear about that? And what was your reaction take? Like, Dude, that's fucking dark because, uh, because, you know, that time my ex-wife, you know, she was working uh, for film productions. So I went to her office all the time to call Norway. So, uh, because that was only phone times and it was expensive to call international. So I called him from there and, and we had like good talks and shit. And he talked about the plans. I was so excited. Like he said, yeah, the album will be out. It's going to be great. Everything we are working on the artwork now. And like um, that he said the first show he was planning. And I thought maybe it's like, like, you know, to do it in London, in Hammersmith's other one, like Venom, you know, okay. and the yeah, seven. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah yep. exactly. The seven Hammersmith. days of hell. Yeah. Yep. Yep. 
So I was like, fuck, that's that's the shit I want to do, you know? And that sounds like amazing. Like, yeah. I don't know, music to my ears, definitely, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, and then, you know, what happened, the summer came and we just kind of slowed down. And at, at some point I was like, fuck, why I can't reach anyone? What the fuck? It's like, it was already autumn, you know, like what's going on? I tried to call Euronymous, no one, not picking up. I tried to call Warg, not picking up. Try to call uh, even Snorra, you know, and the only guy I didn't have the number, it was Hellhammer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that was fucking strange, but I was thinking like, fuck, these guys are still on holiday or what, whatever, you yeah. know, and my school started my last semester, you know, my last year in the university. So I was like, well, I guess they will show up, they will, something will happen. And yeah. then, you know, some friend came over to my place and he was like, um, dude, yeah, what's going on? But you, you played with the band called Mayhem from Norway, yeah? I was like, yeah, why? Yeah, that's, that's, ah, because I just read in the news that the, the guitarist died or something. I was like, no, you are a fucking idiot. It's, yeah. it's wrong. It's the ex-vocalist who killed himself. Oh, yeah, 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 you're thinking. You yeah. are fucking wrong. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah. he was like, really? I don't know. I mean, I just read it. I mean, so, and then he left and I was thinking like, what the fuck? It was like in the Hungarian, it was not even called Metal Hammer. It was Metallica Hungarica or something. They didn't have Metal Hammer still in Hungary. So in this me metal magazine, basically. So I was like, ah, fuck, I go down and buy that paper. What is this shit about? It's about mayhem anyway, I wanna read it. Yeah. And dude, it was like in this, the news section, like when there's like small news about like demo bands, all the fucking shit. So it was not like a headline news, like not like in Norway. I was like, what? I read like, yeah, Euronymous got killed by the bass player Borg Wickedness and I couldn't fucking believe my eye. Mm. Like, what? You know, and it started to make sense. Holy shit, that's why I don't get, what the fuck is yeah. going on? <laughs> Do you know they had a problem? Yeah, <laughs> like fuck. And then I, then it's kind of like I heard it from more places that it happened. And of course that was what it happened. And have you were officially and, talked to Varg like after that? No, after that, no. But Never before, even to this day? No, not at all? Not after. But no. before, we were good friends. I stayed at his place in Bergen, you know? And how, how would you describe him as a person? Ah, he was, he was cool that time, you know? It was not this Nazi shit. Nothing was going on, this racism or anything. He was into, like, black male. He was into, like, talking. Yeah. Completely into talking. He was, like, a younger dude. So, you know, when we are in the early 20s, he seemed to be younger because okay. he was, like, two years younger than me today, it doesn't matter. But yeah. at that time it's different, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, so he yeah. was the young kid in the band, but he was, he was super intelligent, very good English, not like mine, you know? <laughs> it was oh, like pretty good. It was good. Like, good. Like, I mean, really, you have a strong accent, but you know, it was, it was, it was really was, good. It was good and um, I don't know, it's like, um, I just couldn't believe, but he was a rich kid, bro. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was not like the others. Yeah. He was super, like, when I was at his place, you know, he, he had this beautiful, like nice flat in Bergen, like looking on the fjords, the balcony, all the instruments, fucking loaded. So he had it kind of easy. Yeah. yeah. To think about it. Not like Euronymous or the rest. Yeah. Everybody was like, like fucking, like, yeah, like, like us, you know. Yeah, but yeah. he was like having this nice shit, you know, like having a dishwasher and shit. I never even <laughs> seen it before that, you know, for us, it was like, what the fuck? You know, I was like, you know, like, like stuff, like it was like pretty nice, pretty nice. So yeah, but anyway, he was cool. And uh, I don't know, later he changed, I guess. Yeah. So, and I don't know what the fuck happened to them. You know, it's very much personal. Is he at the point issue. like- Like he never had a problem with mayhem, I guess. Yeah. It was like they had this fucking Personal. issue. Yeah. But I think it was just like two young kids, you know, like too much ego. I think he just wanted to prove somehow that he is somebody too, yeah. you know, and that went to his head too much. And that's how they fucking end up in this 
hope yeah. it's fucking bullshit. But it, for you as a person now, if he was to walk in this room, is he a person you'd even say hello to, or he's off limits? Like he's. I would. I would say hello. Okay. Okay. I didn't know if you just hate him like this. It's for fun. I don't hate him, uh, but I can't share any of his fucking. I'm. I'm. A, I'm against his his political visions. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't share any of that shit. You know. Yeah. Sure. Sure. But. Well, I used to hate him a lot for that what happened. Yeah. So, but now, well, he served his sentence. I think he is a very exceptional. He likes to be on the papers. Mm. That's for sure. You yeah. know, that was at least my impression then. Not anymore. Yeah. But back in the days, and I don't know, bro. But uh, so they, it's very bad. It's stupid what he did. I think because if you wanna kill someone, why the fuck you didn't kill the pope or someone? You know, why do you don't kill someone who is like a really, really. Uh, enemy not like your fucking bandmate it's fucking stupid i think well again okay, okay so there's a there's a there's a debate out there people talk about like they believe his side they believe what they hear you know that he's you know when he, he gives his side of the story of why he killed him i'm not sure if you heard that or not i'm assuming you have uh do you I believe that he, he, he basically the long short of it what i heard him say if i'm a memory to reflect is he heard that euronymous was going to kill him that talked about killing him he went to his house to approach him also with the uh, contract to get off the Burzum. He says Euronymous attacked him and he killed him. Do you believe that? I mean, I guess it's just all personal belief. Like, I don't fucking know, man. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. He didn't need money, man. Come on. Yeah. He was, I don't think it's the case uh, that he was. Maybe he wanted to get out with Burzum from. I mean, there, honestly, when it was. When I was in the band. It, you can sense it so much, but they were a little bit come to me. Hey, don't you think that guy's a bit strange or fucked okay. up? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, fans. yeah. And I, I remember I was thinking like, shit, these guys must, I understand that there's been so much pressure on them because this album took so long time, so much effort to get it fucking done. Mm -hmm. So I thought like, this is just temporary bullshit. When the album will be out and we will on the, on the road, everything's going to be fine, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Um, I don't know, man, but uh, all this bullshit that Euronymous was gay and all this stuff, it's just bullshit. Oh, I, I know, I know, yeah, yeah. I know, is that time, I still know that girl, that time girlfriend, you know, it's just very cute girl, you know. So that, 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 is, that is, that's just him talking So it's so shit. much bullshit. Yeah. yeah. So, at, and people, I don't know who makes this shit up, you know, or if it's coming from him or who. And I assume this, it was Varga that made that other, uh, Yeah, but, you know, I mean, that's very lame. Yeah. And nothing against gays, but I'm just saying, like, just it's saying, fucking you're shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, yeah, I don't care. I don't care about any race, any sex, even yeah. any religion. For me, it's the same bullshit. Well, technically, you're basically a Satanist by definition, aren't you? I mean, hmm? are you by, do you define yourself as a Satanist? Um, depends from which point of view. Okay, I see. You yeah. know, like, probably from the point of uh, view of the Pope and the Christian organization, yes, I am. Okay. And I'm okay. very happy yeah. to be that. But I'm not a type of guy who is putting curse on somebody or like, like you know, Texas, making yeah. like a voodoo doll at home or yeah, doing yeah. these fucking rituals. But I am super into spiritual stuff and esoteric and occult stuff. Yeah. Still today. And the older I get, the more I'm into it. Yeah, See, so <laughs> that's good. It's well, because a lot like, of the black metal bands, some were completely like they sing about it. You mean it's like, dude, you guys don't even believe in this shit remotely. Like it's just like a joke. I mean, I'm sure you've seen more than I have since we've met more. Yeah, on yeah. I mean, yeah. I understand. Yeah, it's like sounds cool, but it's, for me, it's not yeah. like that. Yeah. For no, me, I like it's, it's, I like it's better when it's more serious. Yeah, I, 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 I love all the esoteric shit, you know, and the occult stuff. Like I'm recently actually reading, which is not so dark, but very interesting, like Rudolf Steiner. This is what I'm right now into, you know, but I'm always at this period and some back in the days I was more into the dark and occult shit. And now I'm a little bit more like into just esoteric because I just that's my interest right now, you know, but uh, but fuck yeah, like religions suck. Yeah. yeah I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. One God doesn't exist. Yeah. You fucking lunatic to believe in that. Okay. And and that's what that's what used to fucking manipulate the masses. 100%. People should fucking yes. recognize and people should see that fucking power and money and all that fucking bullshit behind and how they play with your supreme self. 
which is fucking suppressed. And esoteric and occult is nothing else, just to open up in you the 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 supreme, the super superhuman. I don't know if it's the right word, but like something. But we have. I don't understand how my fucking finger moves here. I don't understand. It's like how can a seed, you know, a fucking sure, no, sure. beautiful oak tree comes out. There is a fucking energy, intelligent energy, and then we born and then we die. I never believe. I don't don't remember when I born. Yeah. And when you think about it. They say you born when you came out from the womb and as, in esoterics when you take the first breath. But I was there when my kids born and they got the scissor cut. Mm. So they were taken out. They were already a living thing. It's not like your life starts when you're born. Mm. So this kind of things uh, makes me think, you know, and this is my interest. And, uh, and everybody should figure out themselves because it's a very, very unique and individual yeah. way. Yeah, personal. Don't fucking yeah. Follow don't you, you know? Yeah. Don't let any guru, any bullshit. It can be interesting. It's good to have some signposts, some interest, you know. But yeah. you have to figure out because it's about you yeah. and the universe. I agree. Yeah. And and by the way, everything is on our head. Everything, bro. We're talking now. You are in my head. I don't know if you exist. Yeah. Seriously, it's my eyes. What I see is just like electric signals, which is coming in my brain, and my brain makes this picture in my head. Same with what we're talking. Like this is like a fucking, like a matrix, like the almost well, like the movie. Say, I know there's like almost like that movie. But then again, you have to fucking figure out yourself. What's your own truth? Everybody has the individual, individual truth, and you can't just, you know, ignore the dark, ignore because it exists. Mm -hmm. So if something wrong, it's it's you connected to this, you know, and you have to embrace. That's why I think this music is so popular because you learn how to embrace the negative. You know, it's like that's the way to evolve. You have to understand and embrace nature, you know, with all the aspects. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So, but a no, couple, no, no. couple other things I want to ask. Yeah, you. just go ahead. I don't want to go into this. No, when, 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 uh, when, uh, <laughs> when Wolf Slayer Abyss came out, that was after the next record. I personally was not a fan of it. Wolf Slayer oh, Abyss. No. Why did you not stay in the band to do that? Um, that's a good question. Actually, everything fallen apart. You know, it was Hellhammer who left alone. We even lost contact because we never. I mean, we were already friends or shit, I really looked up on him. But for some reason, I was always in contact with the rest of the guys, mm -hmm. you know. By the way, Ward was about to list, also wanted to release. No, talking about Tormentor, one of the main reasons also Euronymous contacted me because he fucking wanted more than anything else release Tormentor. Oh, put it on his label. Yeah, yeah silence, the yeah. Anno Domini. Yeah, yeah. It was his main thing, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and the other thing was Mayhem, of course. But yeah. it was like almost the same interest, you know. And then Ward wanted to re release my that time um, electro kind of in dark, fucking dark industrial band called Plasm Pool. We mm. just had some demos and live shows. Actually, it was going well too. Yeah, I love to play with that shit. But um, but uh, yeah, it's like it's like uh, that was that was the whole point, you know. Um, what we're saying, I'm fucking lost. Well, you didn't sing on Wolf's. Wolf's oh, yeah, yeah. Like you, because we all, lost, we all lost the fucking contact. And uh, I would if they approached me, but nobody approached oh, they me. Didn't, they didn't ask. No, no, no. Nobody asked me. Nobody asked me. And I was like, I was a little bit disappointed that nobody asked me when I when I heard about it later. Because I was actually, when I, when this shit went down, talking about Plasm Pool, that band went down too, because the mafia robbed our fucking gear. Yeah. One of us made some wrong deals. So they yeah. come with a gun and like took a shit. Seriously, that was sure. a big thing. It's not like nobody has guns in Hungary, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it was like everything went down. I was really dark too. I was like, fuck this shit. I was doing only this weird like experimental music and shit. Plus, um, I heard that the police was like really after all this shit. So like my friend. He got like searched. They come to his place and they, he had like almost in trouble like, because he was in contact with Euronymous from Hungary. Mm. So it was like an international police case too. And I, you know what? I didn't want to fuck around with that shit. I was just uh, thought it's better to be like fucking silent. So I was not really 
also contacting or searching for contact with these guys because I had no fucking clue what was going on. I just only heard that it was pure fucking chaos and yeah. everybody was in kind of danger. I didn't want a fucking police problem, you know. And, and then again, nobody approached me, you know. I would do it, of course. Yeah. I think it was... Well, they eventually approached cool. you, right? Because after... The last thing is funny because I didn't hear many records until when Grand Declaration of War came out. Mm -hmm. I personally hated that record. I was like, oh, this is terrible. And I didn't listen to anything since. And that, me doing the channel, I, I post videos every day. I talked about Mayhem and people are like, yeah, what did you think of the last Mayhem? I was like, I haven't heard anything since Grand Declaration. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, you check out the last record. Over. I think it was the Daemonian or whatever. Yeah. You're on it. I put it on. I'm like, shit, this is pretty good. Yeah, okay. I was like, cause I, but I checked out. Cause I just, when I, I put on a record I don't like, I just, you I don't know. Oh, yeah, they, fucking lost stuff. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and then, I, so, I, you, I so, you, so you end up rejoining the band. How did that? How did that go um, down? You did end up. How it back. happened? Like I was approached by an Italian band called Aborim uh -huh. uh, in '98, and uh, I did some guest vocals first, and then I eventually did a full full length. I forgot all about that, but yes, I do know what you're talking about the Borum. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was for me like the mix of this Plaza Pool and Mayhem, like industrial kind of black metal. You know, oh. it was cool, and. But in 98, I sang with them. They uh, may have played in Milano. And uh, the guys organized that we could meet. So we went up to Milano and saw the show. And I first time I met, of, that was the first time I saw them after 93. Mm -hmm. And it was only Hal Homer who left. That was the first time I met Necro. Actually, it was fucking cool. We became immediately friends, you know. And it, even they were cool because they, I, they invited me to sing one song on stage. And they it's even been released you know uh, like a live album Maradolium okay, yeah, okay. yeah and uh, um, that's when we got in touch and then I was keeping touch with with Necro and of course it's basically then in 2000 when Grunt came out I was also surprised I was like okay whatever you guys do whatever fuck I don't know I didn't judge so much yeah. but uh, I thought the drums were amazing but sounded like weird as fuck you know mm. I thought these guys were on speed yeah. it sounded like a fucking <laughs> speed speed laboratory you know yeah, yeah. something but uh, I understand they step away from the black metal yeah team and that was i think maybe a wrong step but in another hand i think i'm i love experiment and yeah. i think i love to break all boundaries so i respected that aspect yeah. that yeah. like this fuck everything yeah fuck We're you all do what we want to do yeah. we do whatever we want and I can understand you that. like it or not okay yeah. hate us it's yeah. better yeah, yeah. but gotta, then yeah. again i grown up with a band which is tormentor which was hated by the media and we had like giant crowd and everybody yeah, yeah. loved that so I didn't, I mean, I don't give a fuck. I think to be hated is okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I take this for what it's worth too. I will say this is um, last time I seen Mayhem, it was in Cleveland, Ohio. So we're from Cleveland. It's about mm -hmm. three hours south from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, is you guys, you were one of the first bands, not the very first, might've been Morbid Angel or one of them, where they're doing the entire album. Uh, you pick an album, they do it. You guys did the entire Day Mysterious Dance. Yeah, yeah, album. yeah. And so I attend the show and I'm like, all right, you know, whatever, I'll check it out. It's, no, like low expectations because I, I like to be. You stop. Yeah, you stop. You like you like the old shit. When I saw it, I was like, holy shit! Like I thought it was amazing. I thought the whole stage presence. Mm. You looked evil as fuck, and the whole aesthetic. Thank I was you. like, and everything sounded good. I was like, I was like, this is hands down one of the best black metal shows I've ever seen in my life. Oh, thank you very much. So I would definitely keep that formula. I was like, that's what I was like. This is what the band should be doing. Yeah, and look like. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I was thoroughly impressed. So I'll just to let you know some feedback in case you happen to give a fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, now it's like it's like to th this year we s we do the 40 years anniversary, you know. Yeah. That's like so fucking crazy to even just to say it, you know. Yeah. When I got into metal, I was like very young, uh, like maybe 11, 12, and I remember I heard Black Sabbath, uh, like maybe 83, you mm -hmm. know. And I thought like, fuck, these guys with this mustache, they're like old dudes, yeah. you know. <laughs> That time, Black Sovat was like, what, 13 years old? Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're young. It's funny so you say that. I'm just like, thinking, like, what the fuck? And I see kids coming to our show, you know, like, now when we are, like, 40 yeah. years and still, like, people coming, like, young people, you know, I really appreciate. Yeah. You know what? Um, also, like, the Grand Declaration album, what is it? Like, 20 fucking four or five years old. It came in 2000 or 2001. Who cares? For yeah. me, it's like, yeah. I'm just representing the whole band. I don't even make, like... 
really like for me it's every song is it has this 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 soul you know that i want to rep represent on my own way you know when i play them live so i don't say that i hate to play the declaration songs yeah. it's not true i yeah. i kind of enjoy them the same even i think many i had some cool lyrics um and he had some good good performances but i understand that a lot of people can stand his shit, but you know um you actually didn't get me, to see it because our uh, grand declaration came to cleveland in 2000 it was them mm -hmm. and the band exhume which i'm a big fan mm -hmm. of uh mayhem canceled i don't know why yeah. i was like oh shit. Paul. this is like yeah this is like i think he had like problems with, with playing live like yeah. it's it's not easy reason, to yeah. it's not easy to handle that you know i was Dude, I love to play live. I always thought music is about playing live. Everything else is secondary, you know? So and, you know, and today you still like it? Yeah, yeah, not I do. Out yet. No, 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 I, 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 that's my philosophy about it. And, and like you, you have to fucking, that's, that's when the energy, the real energy is when the people are there, you know, and everything. And like, then something you create, something happens, you know? And when I came to Mayhem, you know, and I started to play live, I was like, fuck, this is, this is hard not to play, not the singing, but the mentally, the men mentally, it's not easy to be on a Mayhem stage, actually to people have expectations or I don't fucking know what, what's, what's, the, what's wrong, mm -hmm. but it's not easy. So in a way, I understand um, the problem of Maniac. Um, it's not so. It's not so easy. Like I played before with Keep of Colossi, and was smooth or torment or easy. Not easy, but with me, I mean, it's like there is this fucked up energy. I don't know. It's yeah. it's, it's 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 not so simple to deal with. Well, then that fits the goddamn band's whole persona in general. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's meant to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. All right. Well, I tell you, you're actually way more talkative than I thought you were going to be. <laughs> All right. So, having said that, is there anything you want to shout out or? say or that, that I didn't ask anything you want to promote yeah I just want to say like thank you fucking very much and thank you for everyone who supports us and for you guys for listening our music because because that's a communication you know that's a communication and that's what makes make makes me keeps me you know going on this sometimes really bump and hard road you know like my career had like really ups and downs you know my first tour was when i was like already old more than 30 years old mm -hmm. and i started when i was 15 you yeah, know it took a while yeah and uh, so i just want to salute all the fucking metal kids and all the guys and 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 then again don't fucking take any of this religious bullshit find your own way find your unique way and uh, and try to look into yourself you know deep inside to find the find the truth you know and thank you for support again appreciate i hope it. to see you from the fucking stage i appreciate your time taylor thanks thank later you. god damn it <laughs>